This is a really important video for anyone using DaVinci Resolve, especially for new users. We're gonna to touch on a really important system inside Resolve and the main piece of information I wanna share in this video is one that I haven't shared on this channel before and when I realized that, um, I, I, it kinda of blew my mind a little bit. It's very, very important. I recently installed DaVinci Resolve on a new computer and that really jogged my mind of what I would consider the, um, some real essential steps to get up and running and to have um, a good time, especially when you start doing cool things with like Fusion presets and plugins, a lot of the stuff like what I do. Let's get into Resolve. Boom, here we are. It's just a blank timeline. And if I come up to File, Project Settings, I have these set to what they would be completely default on a new install of Resolve. Assuming I think the one th pop-up it gives you is like your standard resolution and maybe frame rate. So on here, like my current standard is just 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second. Um, and then we have some uh, other settings that you might skip over if you're just trying to get up and running quickly, but you really shouldn't, um, aside from maybe video monitoring. Video monitoring is when um, you are using a hardware to monitor on like a much nicer display. This is some like pretty, pretty serious stuff. I don't get into too much like real filmmaking or you know like extreme documentary stuff or color grading and stuff that this would really come in handy for. But underneath there, you have optimized media and render cache. This is really important. And to demonstrate, let's see if I can force this. I'm gonna go ahead and get pretty crazy. Let's make an 8K timeline, 30 frames per second. Let's see if this can even get up and running. I'm gonna drag Proto 2 onto that, my big energy effect. I'm gonna make that uh, text. I'm gonna change this preset over to lava. I've done what I can to make this effect uh, run pretty well and I am now on a, a pretty uh, higher power PC, but you can see, hey, yeah, now this effect is not playing back in real time. Uh, we're at like, what, 14 frames per second. What we can do here, or really on uh, any fusion effect or even like compound color grades is we can leverage the render cache. If I come to playback, we have a few options. We have timeline proxy resolution and then right underneath that we have render cache. Right now this is set to none. Uh, I have smart and user. Smart will pick up m more things more often. User, um, we will come back to user sort of, but that's something you can really tailor. So if I change this to smart, then on my timeline, I will get this red bar above my clip. And if I just let it sit, it will slowly cache over to blue. A uh, little pro tip, if I come into my viewer, uh, click these little three dot icons, make sure show all video frames is rendered. Then when I play, it will play back slower, but it will be actively processing that and caching that as it plays so that when it finishes playing through at this slower speed, that entire thing will be cached and you can instantly go right back and play the entire thing in real time. This is very fast. Um, let me, you know, pull down noise and wind a whole lot probably. I'll probably cache that again. So we have something pretty nice, lots of texture. Cool stuff, fully cached. It couldn't play back in real time, now it can't. And that is because of this render cache setting. Uh, important to know, if you right click on a clip, most of the time you'll have a few render cache options. Um, an important one is this render cache color output, especially if you have like effects and then um, you have color grades on top of that or just a really intense color grade. If that smart doesn't pick up automatically, you can always force it to cache here, um, as well as some fusion, uh, you can select all fusion outputs. If you have footage and you have a fusion effect on top of that, you'll have a slightly different pop-up here saying, do you want to uh, cache the fusion effect on that and then you select the individual effect that is, is giving you trouble and then hey, it's cash, you have smooth playback. But uh, in this process, there are still one, one very important step and that is back in these project settings. I said one important thing, there's a few important things. Um, uh, side important thing. Um, cache files location. When that bar went from red to blue, it effectively like rendered that video and now instead of processing that video every frame, it is just playing back that video it created until you change something and then it caches again. And it is saving all of those newly generated files to a specific location. You can see here um, is just in this eventual cache clip folder. Now, uh, in my playback render cache uh, settings, underneath that I have delete render cache and you can delete all unused or just you can select individual clips and delete those. But even if you select all here, that is still on a per project basis. So in these project settings, um, just get familiar with where this is and you know clear that out every once in a while. I just did this on a relatively new computer and cleared out hundreds of gigabytes of files because of the really, really important thing I wanna talk about in this video and that is backup in optimized media and render cache and that is render cache format. By default, I, I, I completely forgot Resolve did this, it's pretty wild. By default, this is uncompressed 
10-bit. Now, I am not a giant, like, codec and super techie that side of things guy, but you, you do not want this. Maybe if you're working on crazy high-end, like real Hollywood or crazy color stuff, maybe, whatever, uh, no. <laughs> but for most of the people who watch my videos and do work kind of like some of the stuff I do, you don't want this. This is going to generate almost impossibly large files, and depending on your system, this might not actually like help your playback performance. This is generating really large files, which are uncompressed, which demand um, less of your computer to like you know, play back the individual files, but they are so large, you might run into bottlenecks in other areas, like just reading that raw amount of data. So click that and you have a few settings. Now, again, I am not super in the weeds in this stuff, but I believe the two lowest options are these DNX, HRSQ and LB. From what small reading I've done on some forums and stuff, you might start <laughs> pretty much for most use cases, you might start to see like minor image degradation maybe again i'm not whatever um with lb so if you want to go absolute like save space and all of that you can go to lb um i think for a lot of people sq is probably a safe bet you have those same options for optimized media um that you could you know always bump up a little bit more if you want to optimize and keep working with that media and then you have a uh, kind of similar settings for a uh, proxy media and underneath that remember we were talking about user settings in render cache we have these check boxes underneath uh, smart will catch a lot of things that need to be cached, but in user mode, say you only want to catch uh, fusion effects, but not necessarily like transitions, then you just toggle these here, or you can toggle them all on, which I believe will get you pretty close to that smart user cache. This is, you know, not crazy deep, but a little deep in project settings, and it's going to be something that lots of especially new users to resolve completely skip by. And then their hard drive will be full of giant uh, uncompressed video files that maybe weren't helping them at all in the first place. And an extremely important step, I almost forgot this, once you have these set to something you feel like, you know, you want to be working with, especially, you know, if you want to uh, bump this resolution up to something uh, like 4K, I work in 4K 30 most of the time, you have this three menu dot option up in the corner, and you can go to save current settings uh, as default preset. Click that, click update, uh, change the frame rate. Yes, I wanted to. And I believe that will done, but we also have this save option. So I'm gonna click save just to do that. And then now any new project you create will already have those settings changed, especially with a lot of the work I do with fusion effects and plugins and presets, the render cache uh, is essential. I'm, I'm pretty optimistic for how much fusion performance will continue to be improved. But for a lot of people, um, you're going to need to render cache to get smooth playback at all right now. So if you didn't know part or any of that, this video could help you out a ton. Save that hard drive space and possibly uh, headaches with going too above and beyond. Set that render cache to uh, a more accessible and a little bit more friendly format. Clear out that cache file pretty regularly and then make sure those settings are saved for all projects moving forward. But that's all, a uh, little quick video render cache. So, so uh, important, but pretty cool. Uh, but it can also get you in trouble sometime if you don't quite know where you're going. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.